everybody. Welcome to Storytime here at Michigan City Public Library. My name is Mr. Dave, and today we have a very special guest. Uh, she's a T-Rex. Her name is Miss Jessica. Miss Jessica the T-Rex. Hello, everybody. And we also have Mr. Jonathan. Hey, Mr. Jonathan. Hi, everybody. Happy Halloween. Before we begin the Halloween stories today, let's shake our hands up. Shake our hands up pretty good. Wiggle them around. Fingers going. Okay, is everybody ready? All right, Miss Jessica. I have 10 little fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. What do you like to see? I can shut them tight. I can open them wide. I can put them together. I can make them hide. I can make them fly high. I can make them fly low. I can fold them like this and hold them just so. Good job, everybody. Plumply Dumply Pumpkin, written by Mary Serfozo, illustrated by Valeria Patron. This book is read with permission from Simon & Schuster Publishing. Peter's looking for a pumpkin, a perfect Plumply Dumply Pumpkin. It's not a lumpy, bumpy pumpkin, not a stumpy, grumpy pumpkin, but a sunny, sumptuous pumpkin. Finally, on a twining vine, he spies a pumpkin, fat and fine. Not too fat, though. Not at all. Not too short. Not too tall. Not some squat, lopsided pumpkin, but a glossy lot of pumpkin. Why does Peter want a pumpkin? Want a showy, glowy pumpkin? What do you think? Pumpkin pickles? Pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pudding? Pumpkin fry? Pumpkin salad? Pumpkin stew? What is Peter going to do? With his pumpkin home at last, Peter starts in working fast. Draws some eyes, draws a chin and draws a plumply dumply grin. Helps his dad carve into place a simply dimply dumply face. Lights a light behind the grin to start it glowing from within. Later wins the most applause and really no surprise because Perfect pumpkins really do make perfect jack-o'-lanterns, too. Hi, Cookie Monster. Hello, Mr. Dave. It's good to see you here at the library. I love library. Are you going to go trick-or-treating? Me get lots of cookies for trick-or-treat. I love cookies, too. I love books about cookies. Well, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. The time has come for this cookie! Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 Ah, bye-bye. The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt Written by Riel Nasson Read with permission by Penguin Random House Publishing Once there was a little ghost who was a quilt. He didn't know why he was a quilt. His mom and dad and all his friends were sheets. They were light as air. They flew high and fast and twirled and whirled in the sky. They could even ride on a gust of wind and then whoosh back to the ground like they were going down an invisible slide. The little ghost who was a quilt was heavy because of his layers of fabric. It was hard for him to lift off and he was a slow flyer. 
He got hot and sweaty when he tried to go faster. The only time he attempted to twirl and whirl, it didn't end well. One day, he and his friends were at the park when they heard someone coming. His friends zoomed away because ghosts are terrified of people, but the little ghost couldn't escape quickly enough. He flopped over a bench. A family came along, and a little boy who was eating an ice cream cone sat down beside him. The little ghost had never been so close to a human before, and he felt fear in every fiber of his fabric. The boy only stayed a few minutes, but he dropped a big blob of melted ice cream right on the little ghost's face. Later, when some other ghosts saw him, they laughed at the stain on his forehead. The little ghost was embarrassed, and also very sticky. The little ghost didn't like being different. His mom told him he had an ancestor who was a checkered tablecloth, and his great-grandmother was an elegant lace curtain. Everyone said she was the most beautiful ghost they'd ever seen. Even knowing that, the little ghost didn't feel any better. He wished he was just one fabric and not a whole bunch of squares sewn together. The other ghosts called him Scrappy, and he didn't like that. But there was one day that always cheered him up. Halloween! People seemed excited about ghosts on Halloween, and sometimes children dressed as them to trick-or-treat. Every year, the ghosts went to watch the festivities. They stayed silent and still in the trees and pretended to be decorations, far away from any humans. Too heavy to hover, the little ghost who was a quilt usually draped himself over a clothesline. He never had a very good view. This year, he had a better plan. He remembered how close he had been to the boy at the park, so he decided he would be brave and fold himself over a chair on a porch, right in the center of the action. Halloween night came, and the little ghost flew as fast as he could. But he was only halfway across the lawn when he heard people coming. At the last possible second, he flopped over the porch rail. A mom walked up the driveway with a little girl dressed as a ballerina. While the girl trick-or-treated, the mother asked the man at the door something. The next thing the little ghost knew, the mom had picked him up. He was so scared he thought his seams might come unstitched. The mom wrapped the little ghost around the girl and put them both in a wagon. The girl had been cold, and now the little ghost was keeping her warm. He could hardly believe what was happening. They headed down the street past his friends in their tree. No, don't go, one whispered. What are you doing? The little ghost decided to fly away as soon as the girl got out of the wagon to trick-or-treat again, but the mom didn't turn into the next yard, or the one after that. By the time she finally walked up to a house, the little ghost was panicking. How would he get away? The mother parked the wagon and carried the girl and the little ghost into the house. The little ghost didn't know what to do. He reminded himself to stay calm and be brave. The little ghost peeked around the room. There were Halloween decorations everywhere. He even saw a branch trimmed with lollipop ghosts. They looked just like his friends on the tree. The girl tucked the little ghost who was a quilt under her legs as she sorted her candy into piles. He felt surprisingly cozy. Maybe things would turn out all right after all. The girl ate her chocolate bar, and when she wiped her sticky fingers on the little ghost, he didn't even mind. After the little girl was asleep upstairs, her mom gently folded the little ghost who was a quilt. She smiled and admired his fabrics and traced her finger along a line of his stitching. It tickled. She set the little ghost on the couch and went upstairs too. When she was gone, he flew into the fireplace and out the chimney. His smile was three squares wide. The little ghost's friends cheered and rushed over to him. They were amazed by his courage and wanted to hear every detail of his adventure. They flew slowly along with him all the way home. The little ghost was so happy that he felt like he was floating without even trying. Everything that had happened was because he was a little bit different. Everything had happened because he was a quilt. The end. The little ghost that was a quilt. Be 
Believe it or not, my brother has a monster. Written by Ken Nesbitt. Pictures by David Slonim. This book read with permission from Scholastic Incorporated. It happened just last Halloween. The weirdest thing you've ever seen. My brother went out after dark and found a monster in the park. He led it home and snuck it in, which gave me goosebumps on my skin. To see a monster standing there, those giant claws, that shaggy hair. I had to struggle not to shout. I hope our parents don't find out. I felt a sense of dread and doom within my brother's darkened room. My pounding heart began to race, and when he saw my frightened face, my brother flew back out and found two hairy spiders, big and round. He set them gently on his bed. They crawled up on the monster's head, then crept along its scruffy snout. I hope our parents don't find out. Although they gave me chills and sweats, my brother liked his creepy pets. So when he spied three rats outside, he brought them in. I nearly cried. He dropped them in his dresser where they snatched his socks and underwear. Ugh. The spiders thought the rats were fun. Who knew that underwear could run? The monster chased them all about. I hope our parents don't find out. Four toads he captured bounced a ball across the room and off the wall. The rats jumped in to join the fun. The spiders bounced another one. Oh goodness, what a crazy night. The balls went flying left and right and bonked the monster on the snout. I hope our parents don't find out. He next found five black cats that night. I felt so scared, my face went white. The instant that he let them go, they powered on his stereo. The spiders did the monster mash. The toads and rats enjoyed the bash. The monster bopped and flopped about. I hope our parents don't find out. He brought six lizards in and these jumped around on his computer's keys. The rats and cats then punched a few. The toads and spiders, they tried it too. They poked, they pounced, they pushed, they pried until his new computer died. The monster howled all throughout. I hope our parents don't find out. He then snuck seven bats inside. The spiders ran and tried to hide. They dashed behind some picture frames and dumped the box with all his games. The lizards dove to dodge the bats, who chased the toads and rats and cats and swooped around the monster's snout. I hope our parents don't find out. The eight black ravens that he found flew in and raced the bats around. The spiders, toads, and lizards, too, climbed up to get a better view. The rats and cats all shrieked to see those bats crash into his TV. The monster grinned without a doubt. I hope our parents don't find out. My brother really must like bugs, for next came nine disgusting slugs. He put them down, and right away, 
those slimy slugs began to play. They took his skateboard for a spin, and that's when Mom and Dad walked in. They instantly switched on the light, and this is what they saw that night. Nine caterpillars, not one slug, eight robins strutting on the rug, plus seven lovely butterflies, six geckos with big friendly eyes, five kittens on the stereo, four frogs all croaking in a row, three mice inside a dresser drawer, two gerbils playing on the floor. And looking not the least bit scary, one shaggy dog, just big and hairy. But when he saw our parents frown, he started jumping up and down. He yipped and bounced and acted wild. Our parents patted him and smiled. The kittens then began to purr. Our parents felt their fluffy fur. They pet the geckos, frogs, and mice, and said the butterflies were nice. The robins chirped a silly song. Our parents whistled right along. They brushed the gerbils, and it's true, they held the caterpillars too. And mom and dad had such a ball, they told him he could keep them all. You'd think he'd be completely set and never need another pet. And yet today he found 10 snakes, 10 garter snakes for goodness sakes, and snakes he cannot do without. I hope our parents don't find out. The end. Hi, this is Mr. Dave. We hope that everyone has a fun, safe, and super awesome Happy Halloween. And be sure to stop by the Youth Services Desk here at Michigan City Public Library to pick up this week's Storytime Craft, which is a fun Halloween goodie bag filled with crafts, activities, and treats. (laughs) 